What are the signs of pulmonary edema? In no special order, typically shortness of breath, shortness of breath at rest. I mean, everybody in the mountains is climbing. You're at high altitude. You're going up a hill. It's typical that people are going to be out of breath. But you see somebody who's now sipping their soup at night and they have to breathe just to get their breath between gulps of soup or somebody who is short of breath when they're talking to you and they have to catch their breath between words that's shortness of breath at rest I worry about those people another sign is tachypnea and tachycardia which is tachypnea rapid breathing which is basically shortness of breath at rest which we talked about and tachycardia these patients invariably have an elevated pulse rate. If you happen to be a doctor or nurse or paramedic or EMT type and you have access to a stethoscope, these people will often begin to develop something called crackles or RALS. And what are those? It's truly a crackling sound that you can hear when you auscultate or listen to somebody's lungs. Now one little trick is oftentimes high altitude pulmonary edema begins in the right middle lobe. So it's important to auscultate where you can hear the right middle lobe and it turns out that you can hear the right middle lobe in the right axilla. Now after medical school we all get lazy and oftentimes we forget to listen there but if you're in the mountains and you're worried about HAPE I recommend including the right axilla or the right lateral chest wall in your exam. Another interesting aspect of HAPE is that these patients may, not always, but they may exhibit a low-grade fever. It can be kind of confusing because oftentimes medical folks associate a fever and shortness of breath with pneumonia or some infectious process. But it turns out that with HAPE, there are certain inflammatory mediators that are circulating in the blood that may cause a low-grade fever. Now what's a low-grade fever? Well, sometimes it's a slippery slope, but basically somebody that has a fever of 100 or 100.5, 101 maybe Fahrenheit, I can live with that and associate that simply with HAPE. Somebody who's got a temperature of 102 or 103 or higher degrees Fahrenheit, I'm assuming at that point that, yeah, it may be high altitude pulmonary edema, but there's probably an additional infectious component, i.e. pneumonia, associated with the HAPE. One of the final signs that somebody has really end-stage HAPE is pink frothy sputum. I always hate it when doctors, I'll say, what are the signs or symptoms of, of HAPE? And the first thing they say is pink frothy sputum. By the time a patient has pink frothy sputum, you've sort of missed the boat. But end-stage HAPE, these patients have gurgling that you can hear without a stethoscope, and oftentimes they're coughing up this horrible blood-tinged sputum or pink frothy sputum. Very late finding. Please do not wait for that. What do these patients look like then? We've discussed it. They typically have malaise and lassitude, sometimes even cerebral signs because their blood oxygen is so low that they start developing signs that are not unlike high-altitude cerebral edema. But typically have tachypnea, tachycardia, may have a low-grade fever. If you've got a stethoscope, they have RALS and end stage, they are gurgling and coughing up this horrible pink frothy sputum.